We've been playing his music for uh, the past few years, and the single Squash It has done extremely well on radio. All different remixes on it, and a brand new record coming out in March. And we are pleased to and honored to be talking to, all the way from Oakland, California, producer, writer, standout musician. His name is Bill Jackson. So, Bill, great to have you on the show. Hey, great to be your guest. Thanks and, for having me. Yeah, you, you, we've been uh, listening to cuts off the truevibrecords.com website and in advance to the upcoming release for da- jazz funk hip-hop poetry or hip hop how do you pronounce well, that exactly? I, I like the hip hop poetry actually better. Okay, hip hop like poetry. That pronunciation a little better. And uh, that's coming out uh, March twenty fifth. That's correct. March twenty fifth. Uh, your your group of uh, musicians. You know, correct me if I'm if I'm wrong on this, but it seems, you know, what you got going on in Oakland, California, with your musician friends and. Uh, performing on each other's records that that sounds like a cool thing how how come other areas can't get that thing going so well i don't know i think that you know um i i might be a little bit more accommodating than other people Uh uh-huh and i mean i have the utmost respect for artists so you know i i appeal to them from you know that perspective and i think they respond to it so i think it works out well and everybody is doing their own record, and you guys are dropping dropping uh, appearances on each other. So that that's real nice. Yeah, but actually, you know, Souls is a group. You know that mm-hmm. they do group pieces together, and then they they do some individual pieces where you know some other members are on there too. But uh, we have some guest artists as well that are not you know, members of Souls, but. Um, but it all fits within, you know, the concept of the album that we're doing, of this jazz, funk, hip-hop poetry. Uh, Souls actually is an acronym for Sounds of Urban Life Soldiers. That's correct. And, uh, oh, I'm sorry. I no, 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 that's okay. Explain that. Yes, <laughs> it is. That's an acronym. We, we, you know, we, we help each other out. So, hey, tell us how you uh, first came into contact with Souls. Well, uh, actually, I actively went out and recruited them. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. That, that's how it happened. Um, and this album is a sequel to our first album, you know, Paradise Presents Jazz, Funk, Hip Hop, Poetry. And I wanted to work with some, you know, some younger artists. And also I wanted to work with some female artists, too, to, you know, get the pe- female perspective going. Um and that was lacking in the first album. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, this this particular project is an attempt to fill all those needs and kind of expand on, you know, what we started because the first album was only initially only seven. <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> only uh, seven tracks, and then we expanded it to eight tracks. So we added another track, uh, uh, you know, another version. We did some remixes and. Uh, and had, you know, came up with two versions of our lead track, How to Be a Black Man in America. But, you know, I wanted to just do a lot more on this project. So, you know, that's what we've done. This this upcoming album has 18 tracks, and it's going to be a double set. Yeah, oh, cool. So, you, can't yeah. get, you can only get 69 <laughs> minutes worth of music on you know, one CD, so we had to go to a double set. <laughs> I hadn't initially planned it like that, but we there was just so much stuff that, uh, uh, so much creative energy that I wanted to get out there that uh, that's the way it's happened. Yeah, kind of brings us back to when I was first buying records, that double LP, and, you know, it was just, you know, kept you busy for a while. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. Maybe, give you know, give the people more for their money, too. Yeah, exactly. So, uh Bill Jackson, a tremendous producer, musician, and uh, his record company, TrueVibeRecords.com. You can go there now and and listen to cuts in advance to the March 25th release of Jazz Funk Hip Hop Poetry Phase 2, and that's coming out on March 25th, and you can listen to the different songs on there. And right now, let's get into, uh, and we'll, we'll talk about it, a song which is doing extremely well on radio and and also people love it, Uh, Squash It. You've got different mixes on it. We've got uh, 
actually the uh, the remix, the, the radio edit for Squash. It tells tells how this this song came together. I mean, it, it's just a great joint. Well, you know, the inspiration for this song was actually right from experience in my neighborhood because you know I live in West Oakland where there's a you know it's a high crime rate. It's uh, plagued by a lot of drug trafficking and there are homicides and there have been a number of homicides right on my street where I live okay. and um, <clears throat> you know some of which have been televised on the television news and in the newspapers so um, that's that was the inspiration for uh, this particular song which is you know just uh, this is a, a microcosm of what's going on in a lot of, you know, cities, urban cities uh, around America. Exactly. You know, so, so and a very, very si- serious issue when you're talking about, you know, a lot of people dying mm-hmm. over senseless violence. So, um, you know, that's something that uh, I wanted to express my feelings about and, you know, other artists had the same feeling, and uh, through Kelda Music and D. Labrie and Rufus Wonder, uh, we were able to put this track together. All right, we'll come back and speak with uh, Bill Jackson, our special guest here on WVOF. But first, we're going to listen to uh, Sounds of Urban Life Soldiers, Souls, which is uh, featured on the Jazz Funk Hip Hop Poetry Phase 2 record. And this is the lead-off single. And you've heard it here on our radio show several times. Enjoy it right now. It's a great song, Squash It, from Sounds of Urban Life Soldiers, Souls, which is the lead-off single from Jazz Funk Hip Hop Poetry Phase 2. The uh, full release of the record is March 25th, a double CD release. And uh, Bill Jackson is with us. We should give our listeners your website, truevibrecords.com, and you can click on all the links, iTunes, Rhapsody, eMusic, and cdbaby.com to pick up all the releases and uh hey you know i wanted to ask you some some background on yourself as a musician sure uh where, where did you grow up and, and when did you first know that this is what you love to do well um i you know i first started taking piano lessons when i was about seven and you know to tell you the truth i didn't like the piano lessons because they didn't you know the kinds of songs that uh uh i was taught to play i just wasn't feeling it you know but i, I went on i stayed with music I, I i took up trumpet and you know in elementary school and played up through high school and then i took up bass guitar so you know i had you know a lot of background at an early age um but but let me back up a little bit. I mean, I really love music from the very beginning. Right, right. Uh, the piano lesson experience that I didn't stay with for a long time uh, kind of turned me off because I wasn't learning the kind of pieces that I felt or I enjoyed. And but I still love music nevertheless. And you know, I, I went on to you know take trumpet in school and and then later picked up bass guitar and started playing, you know, with uh, a lot of groups in the area, you know, during in high school and uh, my first years of college. Uh, we were talking off air about some of the early influences, Johnny Guitar Watson, and, and uh, what, what were you listening to in those, those formative years? Uh, oh, wow. You know, I, I, I listened to some of everybody, but what I really admired were groups that were kind of self-contained uh-huh. that produced their own music they wrote their own music they played their own music you know like uh, Sly and the Family Stone oh wow yeah and I remember way way back in the day um, actually when I was a kid still in school uh, um, my, my band buddies and I got an opportunity to play a gig at a place in Hayward, California, called Frenchies at the time. It it, it was a you know a real hot night spot, and uh, Sly Stone was a very very popular uh, DJ in the area at the time. Um, and but he also had his band before that was right before, right about the time they came out with their first hit. And uh, anyway, um, you know we just uh, we were the 
you know, we were it, you know, because right. we were, you know, as youngsters, because we got an opportunity to play on the same set with them and T Bone Walker, you know, legendary blues artists, and there were there was another group that was hot at the time called the Casanova Two. Mm-hmm. And uh, here we are, underage in the club. We we played a number of clubs back in those days, but um, anyway, it was, it was groups like that in war. Oh yeah, uh, the Ohio players. You know, back in the the seventies, and then uh, you know, of course, Johnny Guitar Watson. But I, I listened to other groups too: Ch- Temptations, Chaka Khan, Aretha Franklin, uh, Ray Charles. I like blues, Bobby Blue Bland. So you got oh. some, you got some great taste in music, and, and I noticed on your website, son, son, you may have coined a new term, middle school, right? Because you tell us about the, that term. Well, yeah, you know that was a, a actually a term that Paradise, the you know artist that uh, I did the first album with, and you know my feeling is is uh, the same as his that you know it's kind of a combination of old school music plus what's happening you know now, kind of a different spin on you know, combining elements of music. And that's what a lot of this jazz, funk, hip-hop poetry is. It's like a potpourri of a lot of different musical elements because you have, you know, you have, you know, the lyrical part of hip-hop, you have spoken word, you have some singing, and then you have, you know, funk and jazz, and a little reggae, you have R&B, you know, I, I have a passion for Latin, too. I like that. You know, I, I grew up listening to Tito Puente and Pancho Sanchez and Eddie Palmieri and, you know, a lot of people like that, Cal Jader. So I, I just have a wide variety of musical tastes, and it's reflected in the music. Uh, right now, our special guest is really honored to have him on the show, Bill Jackson, who is the leader of True Vibe Records and uh, producer extraordinaire, musician, uh, March 25th, a double CD release, uh, Jazz Funk Hip Hop Poetry Phase 2. And, uh, of course, we'll let you know about that and start playing cuts as soon as it's ready. And you can listen in the meantime, True Vibe Records, to uh, songs off the record, 18 tracks. And we are uh, going to go back a little bit to uh, Jazz Funk Hip Hop Poetry, the original. Uh, we'll get into the big song called How to Be a Black Man in America. And you, you have time for a little more time? Sure. Okay, cool. We'll come back and talk about uh, your trip to Senegal and, and upcoming projects, the video for Squash and, and much more. Uh, you're listening to WVOF Bill Jackson and The Upper Room with Joe Kelly. How to Be a Black Man in America from a very influential record, jazz, funk, hip-hop, poetry from our artist, uh, producer, Mr. Bill Jackson. And uh, we are talking off-air about a video which is going to be released uh, shortly. Tell us, tell us about the video because I know you're pumped about it for Squash It, right? Yes, I am. And, you know, it's one thing to hear a message, but it's another thing to get the visual impression. And, you know, I think it tends to captivate people more. I know that it, you know, that's the way videos affect me. When you get the visual along with the audio. Um, but we chose four different sites around the city of Oakland, one in East Oakland where we shot at this big mural. Um, it's, it's an anti-violence mural with this very, very colorful and has all these themes about, you know, violence and uh, as an alternative to hope that um, that's provided or, or that, you know, youngsters can hopefully take advantage of as an alternative to the street life. Um, but anyway, we shot there. Uh, we shot um, some on my street, you know, which was, it was the inspiration for this video that I talked about earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, and we set up an altar. Um, and, you know, it's kind of interesting because, you know, people walk by and they thought, so now who is this now they got killed because they're so used to seeing that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know? Right, right. And and actually, it was a picture of um, the son of one of the background singers in Squash It, who lost a son to violence mm-hmm. back in July. Oh, okay. And it was very senseless because the, the person that, um, or the perpetrator, 
um, was somebody that didn't even know uh, her son, the victim, mm -hmm. had no contact with him, and it was just kind of a random killing. Wow. Now, he was, he evidently had been, you know, driving his car fast and did some donuts, but, you know, this was a person that didn't know uh, the victim at all and just decided to shoot him. And, uh, you know, just really, you know, a lot of people don't realize until they get directly involved how it devastates families and in turn the community, how it affects a lot of people. And um, it's just really, I think, uh, you know, advantageous to, to put this out visually so that, you know, they get the, the visual impression of, you know, what effect it has on people. Uh, you, you're uh, always, other, oh, go ahead. Oh, yeah, the other scene that we have, a little nightclub scene where, you know, there's a little scuffle, and then there's a church scene, too, mm -hmm. where, you know, uh, people are worshiping in church, and they're the pastor, you know, praying for, you know, the troubled youth, and, you know, there's a choir in the background, and, you know, uh, it gives it another dimension. Uh, you know, you're always involved in positive things and trying to, to right the wrongs and you know, in the world as you can through music and, and word. And, uh, you know, I, I was really curious to know about, uh, you know, the influence and significance of your, your trip over to Senegal. And when did you decide to, to make that journey? Uh, that was several years ago. Mm -hmm. I went and uh, it was a trip that I made with some family members. And, um, you know, it's kind of inconvenient for me because, one, you know, I have a full-time job. I'm a public school teacher, too. Okay. And um, I had to take off from my job, and I had already been out for a little while because I, I had been ill. And I was still somewhat ill when I went on this trip, but I think I, that was the first time that I had ever been to Africa. So, you know, I thought this was a great opportunity. And uh, it just so happened that we we had been studying sub-Saharan Africa in school, you know, because I teach English and history. So, um, you know, I, I was um, I had a lot of anticipation, you know, going on this trip. And um, I think, <clears throat> you know, visiting out of all the sites, and we did a lot of touring. But I think the trip to Gori Island, which is a United nation's um historical site which had been a holding pen for slaves mm -hmm. you know that was a very very emotionally wrenching experience you know visiting you know all of those uh, little uh, holding cells that they had and um uh, you know seeing the place of no return you know where the slaves left the island and they were never to return to Africa. It, you know, it does something to you. And um, I had been involved in producing black history assemblies at uh, the school where I work. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to do something, you know, um, based on the inspiration from that trip. And at the it kind of evolved. It was first going to be one song, and then it just kind of evolved into a whole album because, due to that trip. But it in, included, you know, uh, issues that affect African Americans, too, but the original inspiration was that trip. And you can uh, go to truevibrecords.com, and in advance you can listen to... Uh, Songs which will be featured on the double CD release. The release is March 25th. Jazz, funk, hip-hop, poetry, phase two from Bill Jackson and Sounds of Urban Life Soldiers. And uh, Man, it's been great to, to have you on. And, and you know you got to come back pretty shortly because you got hey. the double LP, man. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> we we, we got to have you on in a in couple months. Hey, well, it'll be my pleasure. Uh, if you just tuned in, Bill Jackson has been my special guest, but uh, you can uh, listen in its entirety for 
four days and four nights at our 24-hour broadcast upper room with Joe Kelly. Dot com will be airing that in two weeks and go to our website and look out. Uh, Bill's picture will be up there with the link directly to True Vibe Records and you can listen at your convenience. So uh, say hello to all the, the souls out there in the Bay Area and we, you know, we got to thank you, Bill. Hey, for sure. Thank you so much. Oh, we got another, uh, we're going to, I think we're going to drop another version of Squash It. Okay. Um, and then, uh, go to True Vibe Records and CDBaby.com for, cool. for that. So thanks, Bill. Thanks, Joe.